Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the final video for the season in this series where we look at the Midnight Mule Mini League, see who won that, who the top scorer was and uh, see how my team did and then a little bit on the FPL meets in London yesterday. As, a <laughs> As always, apologies in advance for any mispronunciations of names or teams that I get here. I do my best. I'm a simple chap. Top scorer for the week was Shazim Akub with Gold Diggers FC with 82 points. And that was without a chip, so that was very impressive, I think. That was Kane with 32 points. Captain Kane with 32, that was, of course. Kiwiu. <laughs> I can't even say it. Kiwiu. The Arsenal defender for 13. Fernandez for 10. Trent for 4, and that was pretty much it. And then nothing on the bench to speak of. Got the wrong keeper, but only by one point, so that doesn't really matter. And then for the league, the top five I thought I'd look at. So, Diego Francisco Firmino Calado with Mia United. They ended up on 2586 points. And then Nathan White with Obi Wan Bissaka, 2599. Clarice Ondunga with Moriarty, 2601. And our long-time leader, Jacob Eriksson with Scott's Glanton IF, got 2620 and was pipped at the post on the very last week by Matthias Gandalf Selikin. I'm really sorry I butchered your name, with Sticky Wiggy, who got 2628. So let's have a look at his team for the final game week. He had Captain Kane for 32. Fernandez for 10, De Gea for 7, Firmino for 5, Trippier for 4, and that's it. And he was so confident that he was going to win, he left Pinnock on his bench for 15 points. So look at that. I'm sure he would have finished a little bit higher had he actually played Pinnock. But who would he play Pinnock instead of? I don't know. Well, obviously Trippier, but that's in retrospect. As for me, I finished in 112th with 48 points. And I made lots of subs. Had I not been at FPL Meets, I maybe would have made two or three subs. But I got carried away and made five. Because I figured it didn't really matter. All I wanted to do was, because it's not been a great season for me, if I finish inside the top million, that would be all right, million rank. So I actually brought in Castagna, Barnes, Madison, Alvarez and Firmino. And no one really did much <laughs> at all. Fernandez got 10. De Gea 7, because he saved a penalty and let in a goal. Barnes 7. Firmino 5, Salah 5, Trent 4. Oh, Madison got 4 as my captain, so he got 2 really, but doubled to 4. And then nothing on my bench. But that's okay. So I got 48 points, which is just inside 3.4 for the game week rank. Overall, 2366. But I did finish inside the top million. Now, this is my worst season so far regarding the FPL and how well I did with my rank. However... I did have a good time doing these videos for you. So if I could, honestly, if I could swap my rank to finish 100th and not have done these videos, I'd rather have done these videos and had the fun of doing all this. So um, I don't mind. It's my first year of doing the videos, which I'm going to say, oh, that was a distraction. So hopefully next year I'll do a little bit better. So there we go. Um, a red arrow, small red arrow. So I've got three reds and three greens in the last six weeks. But I did finish, like I said, inside the million rank. 11 points in front of the million rank. 681 subscribers. Despite being so poor at this game, thank you very much for all the subscribers. My goal was to try and reach a 1,000 by the end of two seasons if I didn't do really bad. And so to get 681 after being around the million mark in one year, I'm exceptionally pleased with that. So thank you very much for everyone who did contribute by subscribing, liking and leaving comments. Regarding the content creators on FPL Game Week, FPL Harry won it with 2,673. So that's an exceptionally good score, of course. Someone else I follow on Twitter is Ben with 2,623. And then the FPL meets yesterday. Fran was there, so it was good to chat to him for a while. He does a cheat sheet video, and that's one of the videos I make sure I watch every week. Now, I don't agree with everything he says, and obviously he gets it wrong sometimes, but it's very interesting to listen to what his rationale is and what he's thinking and how the different colours move each week. They're green this week, now they're orange, or I'm making them red. So it's, it's all very interesting. So if you've not watched FPL fan stuff, I think next season it's worth 
perhaps if you like FPL and you like to listen to people, just see what he says. And then I was, uh, look at that, way down in 56 on the second page. Next season, I'll not be on the second page. I'll be on the first page, I hope, by the end. Uh, the same page as FPL Focal, who was also at the uh, meet yesterday in London. And then Planet FPL James, he was also on the second page. So I'm sure all three of us will hopefully do better next season. This is Meerkat. So he was at the meets yesterday. He's someone I've been watching probably since pretty much the beginning of the season. We both started our channels a year ago. Now, something about this is Lego. FPL Meerkat is he does not template stuff he doesn't necessarily try and go against a template but he just chooses who he thinks and it, it does it does tend to be different to a lot of other content creators so i do enjoy watching his stuff so that's his youtube channel there if you want to go and check him out i'm sure he'd appreciate any new subscribers that he can get and then what about this character this was at the fpl meets as well this i would say was the main superstar there and yet hardly anyone chatted to him his name's scott this is his team. He finished 129th globally and a couple of weeks ago it was actually 35th. So he got 32 points in the last game week. Didn't do great, but it was a very happy chat at Pete and it was, it was great chatting to him, trying to find out his different tips. Something he does, which is interesting, is he really doesn't care what other people do transfers wise. If he wants a player, it doesn't matter if everyone else has got him or no one else has got him. He just gets the players that he thinks are the right players. And he doesn't watch, I think there's one content creator he said that he watches from time to time, but he's not online watching lots of content creators. Of course, he's going to watch two next year and I'll be one of those. He doesn't know if he's going to play the game next year, but if he does, hopefully he'll be joining our league. So looking at the content creators league, which Harry won, that's where uh, Scott would have come. He would have been top with 2,699 points. So who knows, maybe next year he'll have a a Twitter account and put some things out or a YouTube channel but he's actually a PhD student and he said he may not even do it next year because it's a lot of stress but he seemed to be enjoying it and it was certainly good to see you so if you're watching Scott it would be great if you can join our league next season. In game week 34 I made eight transfers I had two free transfers so it cost me six hits that was 24 points and I said I'll track it to the end of the season to see how it went. Because my idea is it's okay to take hits if you're going to make the points back. Now, game week 38 is often very weird in that a lot of players that you'd expect to play don't play. So that did skew the figures a little bit. At the end of last week, this was we were 44 points up, but it cost 24 points. So we were 20 points up overall. But this week made it all go bad. So Reyes to Edison was a minus three for the week. That is to say Reyes scored three points more than Edison. Kepa to De Gea was plus four. So for the keepers, the two keepers, which was Kepper and Rare to De Gea and Edison, between them, the two new keepers got 15 points more. So that was OK, but that was the only one that was worth it in the end because Henry to Robertson was minus seven. Robertson was injured. So he was that was plus one overall. Castagna to Stones was minus two. So that's plus one. Odegaard to McAllister was minus one, which is their minus one overall. Martinelli to Rashford plus two. So that was worth 11 points overall. Jesus to Solanke was minus 11, so that's minus 10 overall. But of course, part of that was to release funds. And then Darwin to Isaac was plus 2, which was plus 11 overall. So overall, those transfers, if I played them every week for five game weeks, I would have been 28 points better off. But it cost me 24 points, so it was plus 4 in total. But of course, some of those would have been on the bench. And by the final game week, of the players I'd brought in... I'd already sold Edison, Robertson, Stones, McAllister, Solanke and Isaac. So I'd already sold six of the eight anyway. So that's how crazy it can get at the end of the game week. The end of the season, rather. So uh, lessons from this. No, not really. I mean, that was, it was silly tracking it for five weeks, especially for the end of the season. But next season, certainly, and any season, I think it can be worth taking hits. And no doubt next season, there'll be some weeks I take lots of hits. So we've now got a bit of a break. Obviously, there's no real transfer. So game week 39. But we've got a few weeks where we're now going to be just twiddling our thumbs, just waiting for the season to start again. I think it's about the middle of June, might be the 15th, when we're going to get the fixtures out. So that's when we can start planning a little bit, I guess, who we may want to get. I have a lot of work to do for these YouTube videos to make them slicker because some of them take me hours to make. So I need to get much better at that. But I do have some ideas for that. So I hope I can find the time to put that in.
And there we have it. That was the 2022-23 season. Thank you very much for everyone who's ever watched any of these videos, especially if you've subscribed, if you've liked, left a comment. That's all very good. And hopefully I'll see you again next season. Bye. <laughs>